No matter what the temperature of the real estate market, no matter what type of property you're searching for, fixer upper, turnkey, or something in between, whether you're downsizing or upsizing, moving from the city to the country or vice versa, no matter what, you need to hear from a professional first. And, and I come to you for facts and truth. I've been wanting to have a conversation with you for a very long time. This is awesome. Before you do anything, listen to the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show, an advertising feature on AM800. Here's your host and broker owner, Dan Jemis. Okay, welcome back to the show, everyone. Kath and, uh, and Heather with me today. They're out, uh, out making phone calls with clients right now. So I'll let them have a segment while I have a chat with Patrice Surratt from Goldbar Property Management. Hey, Patrice, how are you? Good. How are you, Dan? Fantastic, thank you. Uh, yeah, Kath and Heather are out selling houses, and I'm uh, I'm on here on the radio with you. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it on this uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you've been busy yeah. out there. Yes, busy, uh, busy with summer folding up, and but the weather's still nice, so we're still seeing lots of people out looking for rentals. Yeah. It's been pretty good, you know, not as good as summer, but yeah, we're still seeing a lot of movement, which is great. Uh, so are you finding the majority of rentals available right now uh, are one bedrooms, two bedrooms? What do you see? Mostly twos. Mostly a lot of inventory available. of two bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. And that's a shift too, right? We we had a shift there where we couldn't keep the two bedrooms in stock. We had a lot of one bedrooms and bachelors. And now we're hard pressed to see any studios, bachelors, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then, you know, a couple one bedrooms, but majority I would say are twos. There's a lot of inventory out there. Um, and then the bigger units, like the student rentals, there's a lot of big, big six bedrooms, you know, sevens that normally would have been rented by now, but that's the reflection of that enrollment cap for international students. No definitely, doubt. definitely. Had an effect. Yeah, for sure. So, and I, it came pretty quick. We didn't have any warning, which is eh? all of a sudden, I know. you know, yeah. Yeah. Man, oh man. So. Hey, I had someone this week ask me what uh, an average rent is for a bachelor apartment. Because back in the day, you'd rent a bachelor for what, five, six hundred dollars? Yeah, five or six hundred. And right now, room rentals are going for over that just oh to get goodness. a room in a shared place. Yeah. Jeez. So a bachelor on its own, we have one right now, and inclusive of utilities, it's twelve fifty. Oh my goodness. So almost double. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, more than double depending, but yeah. And that's just one of the buildings, but you know, it's, it's a nice one. It's inclusive and, you know, has laundry on site. So it's definitely got benefits, but yeah, it's 1250. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, so listen, our yeah. topic today uh, is all about uh, smoke detector, CO2 detector uh, inspections. Yeah. Fire safety, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give people an idea, cause there's some confusion, you know, how many do you have to have in your unit? right? Yes. Do you need carbon monoxide as well or just, just a regular smoke detector? So just to kind of overview that, you need a carbon monoxide detector if there's any gas appliance. So that could be your furnace, your hot water tank, a dryer, a stove, anything that's running on gas, sure. you automatically need either a separate carbon monoxide because you can have those that plug into an outlet or you get the combination units with the smoke and, and CO2 detectors. Okay. Also, you need one per level, right? So if you have a two-story townhouse and maybe it has a basement, you actually need three, one on each level. Okay, fair enough. And Makes if there's sense. gas in it, you need you need the, the dual units on each floor. Um, if you have units that are um, in a multi-building and there's just gas in the laundry room, say, you also need those units to have a carbon monoxide detector. So if the fire department ever came, that's what the expectation would be is that you should know that and that that would be what the unit is in the rental would be a combination unit or a separate one. You can have a regular smoke detector with one that plugs in. You can have that and that's acceptable as well. But really it's cheaper and easier to just make your smoke detector a combination unit. So what do you recommend for uh, inspections? Do you recommend once a year, a couple times a year, change the season? What do you typically uh, do for, for clients? Usually every six months because you should check the batteries, yes. right? And check and make sure it works. And also just going in, it's good to go in your unit anyway, right? And yes. have a look around mm -hmm. and make sure. Um, you know, you could check your furnace filter at the same time. But a good practice is also is if you can arrange it to have the tenant there is have them sign 
something uh, like we have a smoke detector checklist form where we're checking off whether it's a change of tenancy or just a routine inspection. But what you're doing is checking that that tenant hasn't removed the smoke detector. Sure. And also that you test it in their presence and have them sign saying that it was attached when I checked it and it does work Smart. and have them sign it. Yeah, you can also check the expiry date because obviously there's an expiry to smoke detectors. So you'd want to make sure it's within that um, expiration time. If it isn't, you should change it because the fire department would make you, right? So just keeping in compliance so that if there was a surprise knock on the door and it was a fire inspector, that's the thing they're going to be checking. Um, and it kind of keeps the tenant aware too. Their obligation is that they don't remove it. It's illegal to remove it, actually. So right. when you go in and it's sitting on the kitchen counter or in the drawer, what good is that doing, right? It's not. So they're going to tell you that it's because it goes off every time I cook. Well, it shouldn't. And, you know, possibly you could relocate it you know, but it has to stay up and intact, sure. right? Um, making sure they haven't covered it with a bag. Like we see crazy things. They put a plastic bag over it. You can't do oh that, right? So every six months is, and that's protecting your asset, obviously, right? But it's also life safety. So you want to check it, especially if you have units that are combined, you know, with, attached to other units that's affecting the safety of other people, you know, right? You that's actually, all, it's an eviction. Yeah, you think of all the fires that have yep. happened recently. I, I know someone yes. who actually was living in a triplex and uh, her uh, unit, her, her building caught fire and uh, everything is lost. So she has to move completely yep. out of the place while they tear it yep. down and rebuild. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's sad, you know, and yes. it's, it's, it could be a faulty one, but it could also be that a tenant removed it. Right. So it's very important to have your tenant know that you're going to be checking, you know, and you can do it randomly, but they definitely can't. If they're taking it down and they repeatedly take it down, it's actually something you could take them to a tribunal for and you would get an eviction because it is life safety consider life safety it's a very it's a dangerous act right by removing it okay so and the other the other thing is on the move-in you know it's good if you're doing a move-in inspection again having that form and having them sign it saying listen i'm providing you a unit that has this it is attached there's no paint on it it's working and here i'm going to test it in front of you have them sign it so that if there were god forbid a fire three months down the road and the fire department investigation shows that that smoke detector was removed you as the owner can say, listen, I gave them that unit and it was intact and they signed it saying it was intact and working. Well, they find it over here disabled. Well, then obviously That's the fault yeah. lies with the tenant, right? Yeah. Jeez. Now, before I let you go, Patrice, yeah. what are you seeing market wide right now in the, uh, from, from a rental standpoint? Are you seeing uh, more rentals than there are tenants right now or uh, vice versa? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit more and, you know, seeing a little bit you know, especially in the two bedroom inventory where tenants have a lot of choice, right? So they're really looking at, you know, price matching or trying to get people to price match or really being able to select over a, a whole bunch of choices that are within their budget. And they're going for, you know, ones that might have the in-suite laundry versus a place that it's shared laundry, right? So they're able to kind of use what their budget is and sure. pick the best one for them. Um, so there's, you know, definitely that a little more competition out there for the twos and a little bit of price adjusting too, where, you know, what's, um, you know, it's been sitting. So some owners are actually adjusting their prices a little bit to try and either match what's out there in competition or lower it a little, because maybe we're not at the same price pointing as something that has laundry or dishwasher okay. or some of those amenities that people are looking for. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of good news so I guess, for those who are, uh, you know, looking a little for, some, for, for tenants. Something. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, yeah, for still, sure. Still too yeah. high, but uh, yeah. what do you do? They, they got uh, bills to pay too, it's, right? Landlords it's too, tough. So. They, and, and the interest rates, right? Like yes. until those come down again, like owners are having a hard time paying their bills. So yep, I, exactly. you know, we see why the rents are high and, you know, it's hard for tenants and it's hard for landlords. It's it's a little, it's a, cr it's a crunch for everybody, Jeez. for sure. Uh, Patrice, if yeah. someone has questions out there, what's the best way to reach out to the team over at Goldmar? <laughs> 519-252-5010 or online, goldmar.ca. Goldmar.ca. Patrice Surrett, thank you as always. Appreciate yeah. having you on. We'll, have, we'll talk welcome. to you next month. Thanks. Okay, there you go. So Patrice Surrett from Goldmar Property Management, uh, owner there. And again, goldmar.ca is the website. If you have any questions, reach out to them. We're going to take a break, come back. Kath and Heather are back in the room. We're going to come back and talk uh, listening uh, listener questions. Okay, lots more to come right here on the Dan Gemma's Real Estate Show.